tip against Jordan Mickey. And we are underway this morning, the 905 with first possession of the game. DeLon Wright running the point, of course, for Coach Mermis, getting the screen from post. Lots of great energy in the building right now. Tons of kids here, so let's hope the guys respond. It's an odd game start time, so let's see who's the more prepared group. Caboclo on the drive has his shot blocked. Back the other way goes Stringer. Up first franchise win back in November against this Maine Red Claws team on the road. I like that use of the screen there by Maine, and now they're back on the break, but the layup's a little too strong. Ronald coming down with the rebound, averaging a double-double since he's been back from injury. This is Caboclo. Nice pass inside to Post. He gets double the kick. DeLon left open on the drive. Flips it to Ronald. Goes up strong, misses. Loose ball tipped around. And Amari Johnson coming up with it. Flips it over to Barry. Up the floor. This is Mickey. Out to Miller. This That's what I was talking good. about earlier. This team figure out the skill set when nothing's available to create a shot for himself. Bruno with the length. Skill sets. So I guess it's tag him. It's put bodies on him. It's make it difficult for him to get the ball in positions where he feels comfortable. It's on the entire, all five guys on the floor to push him around and make him feel like there are more eyes on him than necessary. And he addressed the refs, saying, that was a foul, ref. Ooh. Caboclo left open in that short corner, gets the three from the corner. That passing lane to come up with the steal. Randolph with it now. Six on the shot clock in the corner. Barry for three. That's off the mark on the rebound. It's Caboclo. Maine has gone dry from beyond the three-point line, and Toronto's using the pass to get themselves back in the game. Roberts, Suggs now with it, uses the screen. Thought about that three. Someone's got a back door here. Four on the shot clock. Caboclo goes to him. The, the pass Rap a little's too strong. The Raptors allowed the defense to pressure them and get them out of their offense. Nobody cutting on the back end of that play. No action away from the ball. Randolph left open from the corner. Suggs is an experienced professional having average double digits in the French top league, so you expect him to have those kind of moves in his arsenal. On the drive, Malcolm Miller Malcolm getting right to the bucket. Miller. And he, you mentioned Scott Suggs with his experience. He's actually one of the more veteran players on this young team for Coach Mermis. Yeah, it's a difficult thing to deal with a very, very young team, not just a... Randolph backing down, 10 on the shot clock, up to the top. Mickey, he'll take a step in and knock that down. Here, nothing but net. And what they can't have is him to go off. If they're going to lose, they've got to make the other players around him beat them and not allow him to have a hot game. Bruno Caboclo doubles up from long distance. That is Second one in the corner. That is something everyone knows Bruno can do. The kid has range. It's a matter of, again, that word we hear so much in this broadcast, consistency, and a couple of other things added to his game to make defenders kind of sex maximize your time here with the 905. Back to action in the second quarter. Main with first possession. That's Stringer from long distance. That one's off the mark. Tupon with the rebound, and Coach Mermis electing to keep the similar lineup with the exception of Caboclo coming into the game to start this second quarter. Johnson with it. 10 on the shot clock. Caboclo does not use the screen. Had another option that he liked better. It worked out as he used the window. Now that is something I spoke with the assistant coaches earlier today, David Gale specifically. That floater in the lane. If you notice, Bruno went off one foot. That's something they've been working on him with. He, they wanted to start going off of two feet because guess what? He's 6'9". No one's blocking your shot anyways. So if you do at least go off of two feet, a little bit more balance, a little bit more control from the rim, if he goes up with both feet planted firmly on the ground, a lot more control, and maybe we'll see a couple dunks come out of it too. A 28-23 lead for the main Red Claws after an Omari Johnson three-pointer. And a foul is going to be called on. Control. The question now is can he make that floater consistently and switch it to two feet should help. Caboclo, another long one. That one off the mark. Back the other way goes Maine, and they like to put hands of Stringer. Back the other way goes Maine. 
trigger this time, opts to go baseline. They're going to say he was out of bounds. And with the length staying on his feet, not, not leaving his feet, and actually just putting the arms up all the way. His hands practically touch the rim, so Strigger's going to have a hard time getting shots up over that. And Caboclo, as Tupon takes a three in the corner and makes it as Scott Suggs will check in. Caboclo, one thing they really wanted him to work on is keeping his feet on the ground and his positioning defensively because he tends to get into foul trouble so far through the first quarter and now the first two minutes of the second quarter. No fouls for Bruno, which is a good sign because he's staying in the game a lot longer. Yeah, Bruno's a very young guy, a very thin life guy. The extra pass, that's Clark. He'll take that elbow jumper off the mark. Tupon with the rebound. Tupon trying to get it in gear right to the bucket. Has it blocked from Car Clark, sorry. And he had a lot of body control too. Able yes. to stay, stay straight up, not force the official to make a call and come up with that block. Verticality, I think they made up a word for that, right? <laughs> Basketball made up the word verticality. Yes. Not real. They'll add it to Webster's Dictionary. The lob to Kaiser, a little too strong. Pass in the corner, Caboclo, he loves those short corners. Bruno Caboclo is now three of five from long range, 11 points, and we're not even halfway through the second quarter. How many dribbles did we see in between those passes? The ball is zipping around, and that's what this 905 team has to do. Omari Johnson, Anthony, you've really got to sell that pump fake to get a little bit of space. Yeah, a bit of a lazy move there. Miller over to Johnson. Out to Stringer, extra pass. Quick ball movement for the main red claws and shot 13 from long range. Roberts down low, pass into the corner. Suggs for three left open. That falls for Scott Suggs. And the 905, now four of six from long range at 71% versus 36% for Maine. Ronald Roberts did a great job. He's got the ball in the post a couple times. It went up for the shot that time. The defense recognized that he's looking for a shot. He recognized the defense recognized that. Found a man in the corner. Miller trying Bruno. to go. The lob. Bruno coming up with it. Length Defensively. Kills. Using his full frame. And DeLon that time gets enough English on that ball. The Raptors with their first lead of the game. 34-33 with 6.32 to play, down low, Johnson. And they're, and they're doing it the way the big club does. 36-35, Raptors up one. Barry getting caught in the air, Omari's there though, extra pass, Levi Randolph in the corner. The three is good. Corner triples, they're available for this main Red Claws team and they're using it. Bruno with it, fake the handoff. Nice move, getting to the basket, using the opposite handoff, the call. He tried the big guard, Stringer. Randolph. Mickey now in the paint. Spins left, spins right. Ends up with Ronald Roberts will check in. Randolph, 10 on the shot clock. Back out to Johnson, he'll trigger from long range, off the mark. The long rebound. Stringer will try another one. Shannon Scott, smallest kid on the floor, coming up with the rebound. Bounces it to DeLon in the corner. Bruno left open again. That time, Clark got a piece of it, but Post was there to... Skills. And it's interesting, this main Red Claws team shoots so many threes, but you don't see that very often from the Boston Celtics. Nope. So you wonder how that's going to translate when he does get that call to go play with the big boys. Yeah, it's a little bit different than the situation here for the 905. The 905... In a one-point lead with three and a half to play. DeLon on the drive. Caboclo now with it. Cross court, Suggs in front of us here. Has it stripped, tries to save it. It still goes out of, trying to get his Chauncey Billups on. <laughs> Scott using the screen from Caboclo. Back out to Caboclo. Thought about that long distance jumper. Instead, he'll go in the paint. Using the glass and gets a go. Goes out of bounds. Points on five of 11 shooting. Jay Harris checked into the game. Stringer, baseline, nice pass, extra pass to Randolph. He turned down a corner three, wow. Is that in the offense? He'll take this one though. <laughs> That's off the mark. He's probably wishing he had that corner three back. It's a little yep. bit closer. Caboclo down low. 
Bounce it inside to Roberts. Get physical. Surveying. That's it the right there. That's his calling card, though. He may not have made the bucket, but he put his shoulder in a body as a small defender. But what you can do as a small defender is deny position, and that gives the ref an opportunity when he's being overly physical to give you a call. Caboclo caught in the corner, picking up his dribble. Suggs, though, trying to get the jumper to go as the shot clock was expiring. Look at the first time Jay Harris has been compared to Russell Westbrook in his professional basketball career. But a fair comparison in that he is a shoot first player and he's given an opportunity right now. Caboclo gets the pass from Harris and knocks it down. As we talk about Harris shooting, he rings up an assist. Well, you know, he has turnovers on that. So let's see if they find a cutter or someone to kind of play that middle area to be an extra kind of a shortstop cutoff man so they can get the ball to the opposite side. Uh, no, <laughs> 905 knocked it out of bounds. And Bru Bruno's length has been trying to get that ball past him, but he's using it to his advantage. And Miller's not a not a small guy by any stretch of the imagination. He's got a similar length profile, but Bruno is so long. It's a great asset to have an NBA player. And that's why the Raptors are so high on this talented young man. Bruno able to get his hand on that. They ran that play to open the game on Wednesday night. It didn't work out that way, but it shows that it's actually a set play Coach Mermis has in his right. Out of bounds, we're dead. And he sold everything in that package to make that play happen. Stringer using the screen for Mickey on the kick out. Miller right to the hole. A little too strong on the glass. Loose ball picked up by Post Canada. And of course, the NBA D League YouTube channel for all those in the Portland area. Six on the shot clock. Post doing a good job. Caboclo coming across with a little help defense, getting the. And you know where he got a lot of reps? Right here in the D League. Oh, yes, absolutely. The D-League and, of course, the famed San Antonio Spurs franchise, one of the first teams to have their own dedicated D-League team, kind of setting this model up for the future of the NBA and the NBA D-League. For the little slip, but I like what he does. There, there it is again. I like what he does in the pick and roll. And Mickey. a good find for Mickey. Here in the third quarter, 56-54 lead for Here he the goes 905. Again, refusing the screen, but he gets the ball reversal. Johnson trying to get by post. Caboclo on the rebound. Roberts now with it. DeLon tried to get Bruno an open three. Randolph able to get out on him. Three seconds on the shot clock. Post will take the jumper. Doesn't get it to go. And Omari Johnson with the rebound for the main. Red Claws back the other way. A four point lead for the 905. Omari Johnson, though, quickly cut. With the sheer amount of threes, they're eventually going to catch fire, and that can put them in or out of the game. Bruno with a nice move between the legs. Shot doesn't fall, though. Tupon, Scott, and Kaiser will check in at the next opportunity. Barry, high off the glass, misses. Post with the rebound up the floor. Suggs has one man to beat, and he's got Caboclo flying with him. Delon, though, is there to clean up the miss the other way. Turns on the speed. Has it stolen, though. Turnovers. Stringer goes into the body of Caboclo. Forgot. He's doing a good job, obviously. Some of them haven't fallen, but that right there is an example of what he can do with his big body and big shoulders. And then as soon as the 905 cut the lead to two, Cody Clark hitting it from long range. Cody Clark, a guy missing from the last game with Maine playing, but not a big game. He's a contributor that Maine expects to get good games from, and that's one of the reasons 905 got that W. Off the miss from Suggs, Maine. Back on offense. Seven minutes to play here in the fourth quarter on a Friday afternoon from the Air Canada Centre in downtown Toronto. Magna Peak Keel, Augustine on NBA TV. Stringer. In a situation like that, you don't want, if you're a coach, you don't want your, your ball handler to hold on the ball for the entire shot clock and then take a, a shot like that as that, DeLon on the drive. That means you're not doing your work in practice. He's got to know where the reads are. He's got to know where he's got to find guys. And it's just a bad possession. Harris hands it off to Caboclo. Wow. And That's an offensive. Johnson with it. He's been quiet this second half. Amari Johnson in the paint now. Bruno using his length disrupts that shot. DeLon quickly down the floor, right to the hole. Post tried to get that extra pass to Suggs, and Barry able to get in the passing lane, come up with the steal. 
They've got to recognize right now, get back on defense and find your guy. And they did not do it fast. Claus on the baseline, the extra pass. Amari Johnson now with it. Back out to the top, Barry, four on the shot clock. Barry will take the deep three. That's off the mark. On the rebound, loose ball tipped around. And Suggs ends up the way the 905 had easy buckets out of the timeout Coach Mermis had. Clark on the drive. The Cook crowd. Bofo, huge on that defensive possession. He was actually so adding 16 points and four rebounds on the offensive side in 34 minutes of play. This is why the 905 is here for guys like him and the line to get these opportunities to get them ready. And it looks like it's working at this point. Now they can just get a win. Bruno on the drive. The way he went up with that ball, Akil, I, I thought he wanted to do something with it. He was going to punch it. He was going to punch the defender. And the key there you saw, something that probably wouldn't have happened last year, he was contacted a little bit closer to the free throw line, but you didn't see him waver or tilt. He made the decision. He made the decision, it. but it's also the body strength, the lower body strength, the core strength. He's coming along as a professional. And he is also showing a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of intensity as he stared down Clark after that foul was called. Yep. Showing, showing a little bit of grit that you don't usually see from Bruno. A little bit of a baby-faced assassin. <laughs> you still, you, you can still tell his ears just by his face, but he will blossom into a player, and if he starts, get that chip on. To play in the fourth quarter on the inbound, Clark. Mickey is trying to post up on Roberts. These kids are getting a treat. This is an excellent basketball game when you think about it. You've got NBA caliber talent playing. Ooh, and Bruno. Good hands, Meg. Good hands. Way to be there. The length of Bruno Caboclo <laughs> when he stays on the floor. Great job both offensively and defensively. Oh, but right there, they completely lost. That was, that was Bruno. The Scott Morris in timeout not happy with the way they came out after the last timeout. 905 has really been able to get what they want. Omari Johnson on the drive, off the glass. Main. <laughs> Reminds you when you're on the on the playground playing tips? Um, not me. None, none no? of my tips look like that. <laughs> Stringer on the drive. The block both from Bruno and Roberts. In the paint, the floater. Misses that one as it bounced. The rebound, a new opportunity on the shot clock. Suggs hands it off to DeLon. DeLon showing some composure, settling things down. He wants to run a set. 13 seconds, 10 on the shot clock. Nathaniel telling him, go, go, get it started DeLon. now. Great move, no foul call. Caboclo with the rebound, puts it up, gets Bruno. it to go. 4.3 wow. seconds on the clock, and it, Coach Morris wants a timeout. I'll be what honest. a play from Bruno. Bruno Caboclo, it's good that he is because he is the future of the Toronto Raptors at this point. 4.3 to play, main to inbound. Bruno trying to disrupt. Randolph with it on the drive, the block. It goes, and Coach Mermis wants a timeout with one second 